and welcome to freephotoshop.com and part 11 of this series all about the levels command here inside Photoshop. Now as I said in the previous video, we're going to start looking at some slightly more advanced techniques that involve the levels command and right here off the bat we're going to explore the world of non-destructive editing. Now I've already got an image of the Hoover Dam loaded on screen here and if I wanted to mess around with the levels of this photograph I could come up here to the image menu, select adjustments, and then choose the levels command as we've done before. If I did that however, I'd add a static levels adjustment to the image. So I'd apply it to the same layer, and once we're done editing and I hit OK, the adjustment would be applied permanently to the layer. There are some short term methods I could employ to bring the original pixels back, like undo a few steps from the history palette. But there comes a time when you've proceeded way too far and gone through too many history states to even contemplate going back to where you were say 20 or 30 modifications ago. We've all done it and annoying isn't the word. Well just imagine if you could apply the levels adjustment on a separate layer. Well it turns out courtesy of something called an adjustment layer you can. To create one we can either come down here to the bottom of the layers palette and click on this little half black half white circle and then choose levels from there or by coming up here to the layers menu selecting new adjustment layer and then selecting levels and that's the way I'm going to go here although you'll generally find the other way more convenient 95% of the time I'd say at least this way in we get an opportunity to name our adjustment layer and I'm going to stick with the default name here though and click OK now you'll see that not only do we get the standard levels dialog box, but if we look over here at the layers palette, we've also created the levels adjustment layer on a new independent layer above the one we're making the edits to. So that means we're not harming a single pixel inside the image. Okay, I'm going to make some quick adjustments to the composite channel here. I'm going to lighten up the photograph by dragging the highlights in towards the tonal range. I'd say about 200 brightness levels is good. Then I'll drag the shadows in to about say 10, 11, maybe 12 brightness levels. And I'll leave the gamma value set to 1.0. Okay, that's good. Now I'm going to click OK to accept those changes. Now like I said, the adjustments have been added to an independent layer above the one we're editing, hence the name adjustment layer. And the settings we've applied remain completely editable by just clicking on the adjustment layer itself over here in the layers palette. So I'll click on it to open up the live settings once again and I'm going to make the image more golden this time by coming in here to the blue channel and then dragging the midtones of the image towards the shadows to rid the midtones of a heap of blues. Then I'll click OK to accept that change and I could go in and out of adjustment layers all day without harming any pixels inside the image. And I know I keep on harping on about it, but this is such a great thing here inside of Photoshop. You really can't use too many adjustment layers when modifying anything inside Photoshop. They really are that good. Okay, we can also turn adjustment layers on or off by clicking the eyeball, as you would a regular layer. You can also mess with the blending modes and opacity to create different effects. Now I'm going to hit Control w here on the PC or Command w over on the Mac to close this image and hit Alt-N to say that we don't want to save our changes. Then I'm going to maximize this second image called the openroad.psd. Now I want to show you another two big advantages of using adjustment layers. I'm going to start off by adding the auto color command to this image and I'll do that if you remember back to video 2 in this series by using the keyboard shortcut Control shift b here on the PC or Command shift b over on the Mac and notice that while there was a change to the image the area around the bottom here of the photograph didn't change at all I'll toggle between auto color and the original image by hitting Control or Command z a few times and notice that this area around here doesn't change okay I notice in the layers palette that I've got another layer above the background layer Let's select it and then add the auto color command as we did before and this time there's a huge difference between the bottom of the image which is changing and the rest of the image which isn't. 
Now if I make sure we undo that modification and then turn the visibility of the wiper layer off then you'll see our problem. And this just happens to be the windscreen wiper of the front of the car which is part of the original image and if I turn the wiper layer back on you'll see that it disappears. All I can say is that it's really difficult to get an accurate shot through the windscreen when you're driving. All them gear changes and making sure you're steering in the right direction. Nah, I'm only joking. It was actually an automatic, so I didn't have to change any gears. And I'm still kidding ya. I wasn't really driving, of course. I was just a passenger in the car. And I hated seeing this windscreen wiper so much that I cloned it out using the clone stamp tool inside the vanishing point filter, which you can see is an amazing piece of kit here inside Photoshop by the results we've got on screen right now. We've completely taken out that windscreen wiper without any visual marks or artifacts being left behind. Now in order to apply the levels adjustment evenly throughout the image, I'd either have to apply the thumbs down static levels adjustment to both layers, or I could just apply one adjustment layer above the layers I want to apply the adjustments to. So I'll select the wiper layer, making sure it's active inside the layers palette. And remember that whatever layer we have selected, we're going to apply the adjustment layer above. So then I'll come down to the adjustment layer icon down here at the bottom of the layers palette. And here's a little tip for you. If you hold down the Alt or Option key before you select the adjustment layer, then keep the Alt or Option key pressed until you've chosen the adjustment you're after then you'll be able to add a name to it just like we did before and this time I'm going to go ahead and name it entire image and then click OK now here's what we're going to do I'm going to head off first of all into the blue channel and I'm going to draw the shadows into around about 21 brightness levels and then bring the highlights in to say about 249 brightness levels now I'll hit Control or Command 2 to access the green channel. And here I'll draw the shadows into a value of, say, around about 36 looks good here. And then bring the highlights in just a touch to 251 brightness levels. Then I'll hit Control or Command 1 this time to switch to the red channel. And once again I'll draw the shadows back to a brightness level of 20, or maybe 21. And this time bring the highlights back quite a way to around about 220 or maybe just a little more say 218 and that looks good there okay now in my opinion it still looks just a little too blue for my liking so I'll press control or command free to switch back to the blue channel and I'm going to drop the gamma midtone slider to a value of say 0.81 okay that looks a lot better than it did before now I'm going to click OK to accept those modifications and because we applied these settings to an adjustment layer and we placed it above the two layers in our composition the levels adjustments are applied to both of the layers and that's just a feature of how adjustment layers work here inside Photoshop they will always affect layers below them in the stacking order everything above them will not get affected but everything below them will Okay, the last thing I want to share with you regarding adjustment layers is this little white layer tagged onto the side of it. And this is what is referred to in Photoshop as a luminance mask. Now I'm not going to go into huge amounts of details here about the techniques of masking here inside of Photoshop. But basically what a mask does is it controls the visibility of the layer it's attached to. And in this case, being a luminance mask and all, where the mask is white, it's allowing the layer to be seen. Where it's black, it's hiding the layer. And the varying degrees of grey in between white and black are representing varying degrees of transparency from within the mask. So simply put, at the moment the mask is completely white. And we can check that out by Alt or Option clicking on the mask itself. Now because the mask is white, it's allowing us to see the entire contents of the layer. In this case, it's allowing us to see the entire contents of the adjustments we've applied to the Levels Adjustment layer. And I'm going to Alt or Option click once again to see the rest of the image. Then I'm going to make sure the mask is selected by clicking on it. Then I'll hit Alt Delete here on the PC or Option Delete on the Mac to fill the mask with black. 
hence hiding the levels adjustment layer from view and you could see the difference that made to the image. I'm going to hit Control delete here on the PC or Command delete on the Mac to fill the mask with white again and hence making the layer visible. And by the way that Control or Command delete or Option or Alt delete only works to the degree that it worked here with me if your foreground and background swatches are the same as mine, so the black and white. So far so good. Now let's try out our masking skills by boosting the blues in the sky. I'm going to Alt or Option click on the adjustment layer icon down here at the bottom of the layers palette and then select levels and this time I'm going to name this adjustment blue sky just so we know what's happening here. Things can get very confusing if you are applying more than one levels adjustment. Now I'm going to switch to the blue channel and then slide the midtone slider over to the left to increase the concentration of blues within the midtones. Don't worry about the image as a whole at this stage, just stay focused on the blues of the sky. And when you're happy, just click OK to accept that change. Now we're going to mask out everything in the image but the sky. And I'm going to do that first of all by selecting the mask over here in the layers palette. Then I'm going to hit B on the keyboard to access my standard paintbrush and I'll increase the softness of that brush by hitting shift left bracket a few times say a total of four times to be on the safe side then I'm going to select a fairly big brush by using the bracket keys on the keyboard no shift needed this time the shift key is just required for hardness and softness tweaks to the brush by the way now we need to select black as the foreground color I already have it selected so I can just start painting away inside the road and mountains getting rid of that blue cast as we paint and I'm not being that exact here there are loads of ways we can make sure that we're working with a perfectly built mask here inside of Photoshop but for now I'm just going to make sure I'm doing a half decent job which I'd say I am okay that looks pretty good if I had more time by the way I probably wouldn't have used a soft brush or as soft a brush as I used anyway you can make more exact alterations by using a hard brush as opposed to a soft one well that looks fairly good anyway I'm going to alt or option click on the mask now to see what we've done so far and that looks pretty good okay I'll switch that back on for now and what I want to do now is just darken up the mountains here at the center of the image just a little bit and I'll do that by adding another levels adjustment layer from the layers palette down here remembering to alt or option click along the way if you want to name it and I'm going to call this layer mountain and then click OK now this time I'm going to click OK here inside the levels dialog box to create the new adjustment layer and what I'm going to do is carry out the masking first the easiest way here is to switch the entire mask to black first of all and I'll do that by hitting Control or Command I on the keyboard this time to invert the brightness levels or the brightness values inside the layer so white becomes black then with my brush selected I'm going to hit the left bracket key to lower the size of the brush and I'll hit X on the keyboard to switch the background and foreground colors so now we're working with a white brush and I'll start to brush away on the mountains here at the center of the photograph and I'm just being careful not to get too much of the image around the mountain we don't want anything spilling out too much into the body of the image once you're happy you can look at the mask you've created and just make sure you've got something like the shape of the mountains there okay that's good now I'm going to double left click on the adjustment layer inside the layers palette here and then just decrease the midtone slider so that we're making the majority of colors inside the image darker and we know that by imagining that this is a seesaw and that's a good way to think of it if this is a seesaw and the midtone slider is the pivot in the middle and at the moment the bulk of the brightness values are being placed on the left side of the seesaw so the left side of the seesaw is being weighed down so the bulk of the brightness values inside the image are in the darker end of the brightness spectrum so we're applying what we're seeing visually happening to the histogram the blacks weighing down the histogram we're seeing that visually inside the actual image by it becoming darker 
Now keep your eye on the mountain and then when you're happy with the changes you've made, go ahead and click the OK button. Now if you want to, you can go back and amend the masking of the mountain because perhaps you think you got too much or didn't get enough. Then once you've done that, you can go back into the levels adjustment and play with the values again. And then maybe you can switch to the sky layer and take some of them blues out or perhaps mask a little bit more of the sky or say perhaps a little less of the sky. I think you're getting the idea. But I just wanted you to know how great things are when you start working with live parametric layers and effects here inside of Photoshop. Now most of the time when you're applying levels adjustment layers you won't need to use masks but sometimes they're useful especially if you're feeling creative. The main thing however and the important aspect of this tutorial is the one and only adjustment layer. I'll be using it to apply levels in the rest of this series so there's no risk of anyone forgetting it and I'm going to go ahead and turn all of these adjustment layers off now then I'm going to switch on the entire image one then we'll see the image with the adjustment applied to the sky as well and then finally the mountains and isn't that looking good okay so I'm going to alt or option click on the background eyeball so we can see the original image without any modifications applied to it and now here's the image with all three levels adjustment layers applied minus the windscreen wiper which I was just sick of staring at all day long anyway isn't it amazing what we can do with the levels command well on that note coming up next we'll look at another form of non-destructive editing and that's one centered around 16-bit editing and the 16-bit mode right here inside Photoshop well thanks once again for joining me here at freephotoshop.com I'll see you in the next video mm -hmm.